Hey guys, CatCom here with Studio Sweat On Demand and I am here with one of the most influential fitness experts in the entire world in my opinion and her name is... Carolyn Erickson. Hi. Thank you. You do know your name. Good job. <laughs> Good start. Okay, what we're here to talk about today is all the misconceptions when it comes to exercise as you age, okay? So that is the topic that we're covering today. Who this applies to is anyone who plans on aging. Mm. Yeah. What's the alternative? Six feet under. <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> Carolyn, there are so many misconceptions out there. There are so many different things that you read. Some will say exercise only at low to moderate intensities. They'll say don't do strength training, don't do cardio. Please help us figure out what we should be doing as we age. What changes do we make, Cat. if any? Yes. That's such a good place to start because it's kind of like articles on pregnancy or mm -hmm. supplements, like the most confusing topics on the planet, right? Mm -hmm. Same with aging and exercise. So your resources have to be like top notch, right? You're talking about the Age Institute, um, you know, even the Mayo Clinic and articles for ACE, which is American Council on Exercise, mm -hmm. and AFA, which is the American Federation of um, uh, so, uh, yeah, that it's one. Okay, AFA. Yeah, that AFA. one. Because <laughs> I'm ace. Yeah. Anyway, so there, there has to be uh, some solid information coming because otherwise it's just going to be all over the board. So, um, so those are some good resources that we can trust. Yes. Great. Yes. Well, what do they say now? Well, nowadays? you know, <laughs> I think that we should really define who we're talking about Please? in this. Yes. So, um, I said anyone that's going to age. Well, but. yeah, but we're <laughs> specifically talking about women, uh -huh. and we're talking about perimenopausal women and menopausal women, which limits the audience a little bit, right? Good. Yeah, yeah. So, um, really important to continue to exercise. So there's, there's the category of non-exerciser or casual exerciser, mm -hmm. and then there's the category of, yeah. yeah. So like here at Studio Sweat On Demand, we have so many avid exercisers. Yep. So the conversation sounds and looks a little different yep. based Agreed. on that, right? Agreed. And so um, nonetheless, it's still just as important. So if you're a casual exerciser, it's really important to, I know it's important to listen to your body, but it's also important to be able to overcome what soreness you may have and things like that and not to be too wimpy because there's a lot of uh, risk factors that go along with aging mm -hmm. and if you don't exercise you lose the ability to move and so you again it's a vicious circle that you you know then you don't exercise and you and don't, you don't move and then yeah. You don't, yeah it just gets worse mm -hmm. so for the casual exerciser you need to really up your game it's not slow down it's up your game nice yeah i love that you said that mm -hmm. and um you need to do aerobic activity you need to have strength training and not really s endurance training is great that's kind of what we do in some of our classes but i want you to pick up some heavier than usual weights like not just the threes and the five pounds grab some 20s grab some 15s, grab, mm -hmm. grab something bigger so that your maximum amount of repetitions that you do with those weights is about 12, right? right? Not, not that, you know, when you're moving and grooving to the music and your choreography is to the music and you've got like 32 reps of something in, yeah, they that's what we're talking lighter. about with endurance right? yeah. versus the, the strength training where you need to, you know, get stronger bones. But mm. also lift heavy is what she's saying. And of yeah. course, make the weights that you choose appropriate for the exercise. So she's not suggesting you do a lat raise with 20 pounds. Oh no, Okay, you, you gotta know what weights apply to certain exercises. If you can't do it at all, I can't do a lat raise with 20 pounds. Nor should you. Um, <laughs> but I used to be able to and I used to, right? Ooh. So there's different, like I said, different phases. It's, yeah. I mean, a woman's body and man's, but a woman's body is mm -hmm. in a constant state of change, True. right? True. And True. I used to lift really heavy. I think we talked about that mm -hmm. on the Facebook page and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But and now I have to go a little bit backwards. But it doesn't mean I'm dropping down to the five pounds. I'm, right. I literally have dropped to the 15. Yeah. So. so it's really important, if I'm understanding you correctly, that um, you work every major muscle group, lifting at least once a week with a heavy weight and lower reps. Two to three. With heavy, I'm just saying, with extra oh, yeah. heavy. Yeah. Okay. At least once okay. a week with the extra heavy. If you want to do an endurance strength training, That's right. another day. But sure. at, at least twice a week, work every major muscle group. Agree. No matter what your age. Yeah, no matter what. Okay. 70s, 80s, do it. Okay, so we've got the strength training. Aerobic training is more, not the steady state stuff. Now, if you're a, a beginner, 
you might start off with 10 minutes on walking on a treadmill or outside walking or on a stairmaster or what have you. That's steady state. When you're at the same pace, kind of like you hit manual and you go the same pace the whole time. Yeah. Versus the hit training, which is high intensity training or high intensity interval training, which mm -hmm. is even better yeah. when you're working against the clock with work to rest ratios, yeah. like a 40 um, second work compared to a 20 second right. rest. And you change that work to rest ratio up so that your body's always guessing, right? You wanna keep it guessing, that's how you absorb all the benefits of exercise. Mm -hmm. And so if you continue to do that versus the steady state cardio, that's gonna, in, it's gonna uptake your aerobic capacity, it's gonna help you reduce cancer, it's gonna help you reduce heart disease, heart disease diabetes uh, type two, mm -hmm. all those things. Yep. So that's the second thing. That's really great that you say that because I, I think one of the things that people read often, because it's out there a lot, is that as you age, just and when you're in the perimenopausal or menopausal stage, you can just do low to moderate cardio exercise. She's saying the opposite. No, Y'all heard research that, is right? out there. Yeah, research is definitely out there. So now that doesn't mean, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you can't do some of your steady state training. It doesn't mean that oh, you yeah. can't also add in, you know, a, a two mile run where it's it's a jog and you're between you know, 60 and 80% maximum heart rate. Um, it, you can totally do that too. If I'm understanding you correctly, you you're just saying- You absolutely are. Do, do those other things that she just talked about in addition to that right. to be at your best as you're going through these phases right. of life. Incorporate that as well. Yeah, because I still like steady state. Totally. I like to just kind Love of edge it. out on the on the step mill or the Stairmaster mm -hmm. um, for, you know, 30 minutes. But it's cathartic. It, it is, it's great, mm -hmm. it's great. And it's more for up here than it is up over here, right? So, but yeah, so get, get on it get some hit training we have some great hit classes mm -hmm. on studio sweat so that's two things the third thing is don't forget about your flexibility right i have noticed being almost 57 you have great flexibility and mobility i right? have yeah. i've had better yeah. i feel it right so yeah. i've kind of i kind of let that slack when um we had the tough 2020 i was you know i was doing what i could to try to still lift some weights mm -hmm. and do my stuff at home and i neglected yeah. my yoga and so i i feel that now um i feel it a lot yeah. and and it doesn't have to be yoga just mm -hmm. so you know she is like a yoga master i'm not kidding you should see the things that she can do but for those of us like me I do like yoga it's a little bit hard on my joints yeah. okay oh so you there's a lot of other ways that you can work on your mobility as a matter of fact we have a vlog out there that's just on like ways to increase mobility that aren't just your basic stretches or yogas right if you're doing a full range of motion squat guess what you're working on your mobility you're working on Absolutely. your flexibility yeah so you know just keep those things in mind a nice long stretch session where you're mm -hmm. dedicating 20 minutes just to yeah. your stretching that will help you as you age. Yeah, you gotta okay. find your jam. You gotta find your Otherwise, jam, you won't man. do it. Yeah, exactly. Right? So that's a lot of things so far. And then there's a fourth thing, and that is balance. Okay. You know, especially when you're oh, this is a big one. When you're talking yeah. about, I mean, I feel it. I mean, something happens after 50, and mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I never thought it would happen to me, but. It's also like, it's kind of like when you have an injury, mm -hmm. right? And you have, you have a, I, we talked about it before, you have some kind of injury that keeps recurring. Ankle? Ankle. Okay, so. When now, I'm on every five year plan, yeah. roll it really hard. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the ankle thing, like now aren't you mm -hmm. super cognizant of where you place your feet when you walk down the steps so and where aware. you, right? So you start to do mm -hmm. that automatically. It's kind of like that. Your balance goes a little bit when you have an ankle, ankle injury and also when you age, it's, yeah. a, it's just a fact. Well, because if you think about it, and I know we talked about this before the more years you add to your life the more injuries are in your past that you're still dealing with as you move forward so now when you were 22 maybe you dealt with like one or two major injuries okay add another five years now you got five add another 10 years now you've got 15 right it's true so, it's true yeah. you just have to pick like in order which one's worse so to decrease the amount of injuries you can continue to add, it is very important that you continue to work on your mobility and flexibility. Yes, yes, okay. and balance. And balance. Balance is huge. Yes. So, you know, once you well, master- Well, if you have bad balance, you're more likely to injure yourself. Absolutely, and fall, right? <laughs> right. That's yeah. what a lot of um, injuries happen yeah. um, in, in the elderly, right? Yeah. Not necessarily in, in my Stepping age Stepping off a curb all <sighs> the time. Yeah, well. Boom, down you And go. so that's, that's very important. Mm -hmm. And so once you master the exercise, you, you add an element of balance, 
So Good. how can they work on their balance? Just if, if you were to give one or two quick tips on working on balance. You know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to... Uh, refer back to like a lunge or something, right? Mm -hmm. So since I have jeans on, you have to do it. So show us a, just a lunge. Standing lunge, down, up, down, up, down, up. So stationary just lunge? stationary lunge, down, up, down, up. Yeah, so, okay, down, up. Now, How am I doing? Once you master the form on this, she's got 90 degrees in her front leg, she's got 90 degrees in her back leg, she's Do equally I? distributing her weight. You're gonna add a knee and stand in, on one leg. Am I? See, yes. first one's okay. always the worst first one. First one's not, it's, 90% it's not going to happen but that's your element of balance and that's a hard move and then you add you know a weight to it or a shoulder press which goes a little mm -hmm. you know further away from the body the longer the lever the harder the exercise and so yeah that exactly. would be a perfect example so breaking that down like a little bit further or maybe I'm actually taking it up a little higher unilateral movement that's one great way that you can work on balance mm -hmm. single arm rows right mm -hmm. single arm shoulder press narrow if you're getting older. Double the load. Put two weights in one hand yeah. versus all this all the time, right? Yeah, even, even something that. like that. Mm -hmm. So anytime you're working unilaterally, your body really has to fight to balance. Even if you're doing a unilateral chest press, you're on your back, one arm out, your core has to really stabilize. So that's balance in the upper mm -hmm. body. Lots to think about. Yeah, and, um, I know this is the last thing I'm going to talk about, but you're willing to add, or you're um, capable of adding more or okay. encouraged to add more. But okay. the last thing is she talked a little bit about bone density. Oh, yeah. I wanted to mention just the reasons, the why, I guess, yes. you know, it's really important to exercise for the reasons that all we, we spoke about, right? To prevent disease and, and bone density and things like that. But there's, there's, it's more intimate than that too. I mean, it's not just like... When you exercise, you keep the weight off, right? When we go through menopause or perimenopause, it's, you're subject to gain weight here. And this weight- It's um, real. Is, is real, unfortunately. And body changes, it's okay, mm -hmm. it's okay. Your values change as you old, get mm -hmm. older, so it's not as important, but it's still important enough that you wanna main, try to maintain and work on it. However, there's, we talk about the adipose tissue, the fat, right? Especially the midsection fat, which is really dangerous for your heart. And the, the two types of uh, fats are the subcutaneous fat, which is just the, the jiggly part, like under your belly, right? The fat that you can physically see. But the most dangerous fat the is the fat. verse, uh, yeah, is the visceral fat. And that's the Inside. fat that hides around your organs. And that's the most dangerous fat. And so e you can be lean, but still have visceral fat because of your diet. So that's another thing. So you want to be careful of, you know, what you eat. I treat myself all the time. And so I don't deny myself, but I know if I'm going overboard that, you know, I know when to stop. So it's about control. There's a lot of factors. And so I wanted to make sure that we talked about, you know, the fat, the weight gain, um, the, the reducing the risk of cancer, and then the bone density, which is, Unfortunately, I think by the time we start to, like we're 30, our mm -hmm. bone density decreases. And so, Along if with you, our lean body mass. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you lift those heavy weights that we were talking about, that's going to help you. That's going to help you have strong bones, okay? And it'll help you so keep you your density higher. Yeah, you won't lose as much of your bone density if you're lifting with heavy Correct. weights. You're loading them, you're compacting them. Think about it that way. Um, and so... You know, those of you that are starting to lift lighter weights, mm, yeah. no. Pick up the heavy. Yeah, pick mm -hmm. up the heavier weights and um, really think about what you're doing for your bone density because with osteoporosis and those other things that we deal with as we age, this is something that we can use to at least maintain and not reduce our bone density. Absolutely. And you'll be in a better mood if you work out. Come on, let's face it. The end. <laughs> no, that seriously, seriously matter. You talk about mood, it's one of the things yes. that you have on the board, so. Yes, it does. And by the way, if you see a fan, like if you see your hair blowing in the wind, it's because I'm, I'm hot flashing so much and I'm like, I cannot sit in here without something that makes me feel like I can be calm. So that's yeah, why we look like- it's 55 degrees and she's no, sweating. It's, <laughs> maybe kidding. it is, but you know, it, it helps, but yeah. All right, Carolyn, well, thank you so much. Um, I'm telling you when I sent out uh, requests for topics that people wanted yeah. to talk about, this was the number one request that we had. Yay. So, well, um, if there's any more, you know, we'll, we'll go on. We'll do it again. She okay. is the gal. And for those body sculpting, fat torching, osteoporosis, uh, osteoporosis <laughs> fighting yes. workouts, you know where to check out. Studio Sweat On Demand. See you there. Bye.